Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Let's all stand. Come on, put your hands together.
within us. Amen. Hallelujah.
on, sing it again. Before you're seated, turn to your neighbor and greet them. Welcome them to the house of the Lord. Praise God. Uh, what a blessing and an honor it is to live in such a great country. Amen. You know, sometimes we forget what this day is all about. You know, um, there's men and women who've paid the ultimate sacrifice so we could sit here today and worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's not. It's not just another day. It's not just another holiday. It's not just a day off work. We have to remember that yes. this isn't free. People, mothers, fathers, have laid down their lives for each and every one of us here. Kids, they'll never see their father again or mother again so that we could do this. We forget how great this country is. We take it for granted. It's not free. Just like salvation wasn't free. Jesus laid down his life for us. And there's a blessing in that. You know, for those, it takes a special person and a special sacrifice to go out there and lay down your life for, for, for the person to the left and right, right of you. It, it's not, not everyone could do it. It's hard to leave your families and go out there and fight for a cause, fight for the people here. It's a blessing. It's an honor. Never forget that. It's not, it, this, this, is, this is very personal. I spent nine years in the Marine Corps. But it's not, a, it's not. But it, it, again, it's not about me. I'm here. It's about the ones that aren't here. 
you know, there's a time and place for Veterans Day and, and stuff like that, but this is the, this is the most, it, there's just something special about this because they're not here anymore. And it's a blessing and it's an honor to serve and the ultimate sacrifice of laying down your life. I mean, what does the Bible say? There's no greater love than the one who lays down his life for his friends, right? Um, so just remember that. When you're at home today or whatever you're doing on Monday, just, just remember that. It's, 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 it's something bigger. It's something greater and better. And, and, and you're blessed to live here and never forget that. I think we have uh, one more video if you want to roll that. Freedom's call is demanding. It comes too often and asks much. At times, it demands all. One way we consider that call and the sacrifice of those who have answered is through the setting of the missing man table. This table, while often used to remember our POWs and MIAs, also pays homage to all who did not return. We remember our fallen this way today. The table is round to show our everlasting concern. The cloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their motives while answering the call. The single red rose represents the blood that was shed and the lives lost in that service. It also represents the family and friends who keep the faith. A yellow ribbon for the yellow ribbons worn by those who remember and never forget. A slice of lemon on the plate reminds us of the bitterness of our loss. A portion of salt a reminder of the tears shed. A lighted candle reflects our ongoing hope. An inverted glass. We can no longer share a toast. The chair is empty. Our companions are no longer present. And to all um, the families that have um, um, that have lost somebody, um, thank you for your sacrifice, and um, our prayers are with you, and. Uh, Fire and Water, this church, is um, thankful and um, grateful. And for the ones that are currently serving also, thank you for your service. Because we wouldn't be where we're at today, even with everything that's going on in this country, it's still the greatest country in the world. And I, and listen, and I can, I can, I can. And I, and I know what I'm talking about. It's, you know, sometimes you see stuff on TV, you know, when you go overseas and you've been to a few countries, you know, Indonesia, India, Africa, you know what I mean? And you, you see some things and you come back home, you realize, and as Pastor Ronnie said, he's like, man, he goes, I just, I, how much, I, he, he, was, he was coming back, how blessed we are and how much, he goes, man, I'm going to appreciate the things that I have around me. And, and, and that's the truth. But lives have been lost for us to have this freedom and the blessing of this country amen, amen. and um, again to all that have served and to the parents and to family members um, that um, have lost somebody um, uh, our prayers are with you and and God bless you also because I know with families also that have people um, serving overseas you know that's a difficult time that's a sacrifice there also amen and um, and um, God bless you God bless you. God bless you. And even right now, um, in this place, we just want to say thank you to the ones that are even currently serving and protecting our country. Um, if you're in this place and watching at home, thank you. 
thank you, thank you. Um, if you're in this place, um, or you have somebody that is serving, or you've lost somebody that has served, would you just stand to your feet, please, at this time? Yeah, come on now, amen. These are the heroes, amen. Thank you. And I pray God's blessing upon you and your families in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you know what? Um, as Anthony said, um, um, uh, we can never forget. And as we never forget, it should be fuel for us. It should be, it should propel us to move forward with what others have done for us. We have a responsibility, and I'm going to say it like this, to make it count to make it count, to, to impact the world around us, to, 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 be, to bring hope and to, to be a blessing and to, bring, and to bring solutions to what's happening around us. We've been given a gift of, of liberty and freedom, and we need to be faithful with that liberty and that freedom to be a blessing to others and to bring life to others and to bring encouragement to others and to make this place a better place. Can you say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. amen. Praise God. Um, at this time, if we can have the ushers to come forward, we're going to take the offering. Um, are you ready to give this morning? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Uh, how many were here last night? Woo! Wasn't that awesome? Wasn't that awesome? What an altar call. What a night. Um, uh, what a blessing and 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 again you know Memorial Day weekend and just you know just last night's service and even today praise God uh, uh, there's a special blessing I'm telling you right now as you are putting God first a lot of people and, you, and and even like Anthony says you know oh it's a Memorial Day weekend it's a day off it's a weekend off you know it's and and, and they don't stop to, to, to take a step back and understand what this is amen and what the meaning of, of what's happening over this weekend and, um, and people are out and about, and, uh, um, um, but here you are today um, putting God first. Amen? And I pray a blessing upon you, a special blessing upon you this weekend. Amen? Uh, um, and, 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 you know, starting off the week, this, well, the, you know, Memorial Day, by, by honoring God, putting God first. And, um, and, you know, tomorrow, praise the Lord, you know, barbecues and get-togethers that's great amen but let's not you know but we don't we don't we but god we still keep god first amen praise the lord so um great night last night to god be the glory and i want to say thank you to all the servants last night so many people worked so hard and the food was off the hook last night too now the, the best part of course was the altar call that was packed here last night what an altar call last night so many souls that came into the kingdom People calling upon the name of the Lord, surrendering their hearts, and saying yes to Jesus. And to God be the glory for that. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So to everybody that served yesterday, the outreach, the food, the preparations, everybody from A to Z, awesome. The greatest among them is a servant. And that's what we can, this is what happens when we all do our part. Amen? The results are what we saw last night. So we need to keep on going, amen. We can't settle and get comfortably, uh, comfortable. And even after this weekend, you know, you have a great victory, a great weekend. Okay, now we can take it easy for the next couple of weeks. No, we take it to another level. Amen. Did you hear what I said? We take it to another level, amen. Praise the Lord. Look at somebody say, we're going to another level. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you ready to give? Watching at home, thank you for your faithfulness and your trust in the things of God as we continue to move forward for the glory of God. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for these precious hearts, and I just pray right now, thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to give, Lord God, and to impact your kingdom, to pull people out of the pit of hell into the kingdom of heaven. Lord, it is a privilege, and thank you for um, this opportunity to impact others with our giving. So, Lord, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that you just press your people, bless your people, press down, shaking together, overflowing as they give in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Praise the Lord. You guys go ahead and serve the people at this time. And um, don't forget, tomorrow, tomorrow night, you know, after barbecue and your, uh, your stomachs are full, we're going to be here tomorrow night for prayer at 7 o'clock. Amen.
that's what I'm talking about taking it to the next level praise God so did you hear what I said amen the last couple of prayer services and we heard testimonies last night also of what God's doing in this place so we're gonna be here tomorrow night at 7 o'clock for one hour prayer as we continue to press in and remember the word of the Lord this year as we come back to him our first love and get on our knees it's gonna be a year of miracles and God is being faithful to his word and things are happening and um, and we want to continue to fuel that fire and continue to be faithful to that word amen so tomorrow, 7 o'clock, and Wednesday, life groups as we continue on the series on um, your true identity. Amen? amen? Amen. If you know who you are in Christ, amen, that solves a lot of problems. You're not an accident. You're not a mistake. You're not here just to be. You're a child of God. Amen? God's got a plan and a purpose for you. Made by the hand of God. Praise the Lord. You're special. You're one of a kind. Amen? You're a miracle, praise God, and God's got a plan for your life, amen? And when you know who you are in Christ, you don't worry about what anybody else has to say about you, amen? All you care about what he thinks about you, amen? And he loves you, praise the Lord. He's crazy about you, amen? And he's got a great plan for your life. Be great for Jesus, amen? So Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, praise God, amen? Let's all stand to our feet and let's just worship the Lord for the next few minutes. Amen.
just for a few minutes just for a few minutes you may be seated just keep the lights where we are that's fine praise the lord stephen last night last night you came up you know, I, I, was, I was just we were just having some fun when i when i ran into stephen and i go hey it's you know it's, it's, it's a weekend and you know aren't you over you know you know i was just like messing with him and um and um because i can amen because i can and um and um and then he just turned around and said no pastor you know what it's why don't you say how many months now and what you just told me yesterday just encourage somebody well me and my wife were sitting in the room yesterday and um we were just talking and um she said you know you're eight, you're eight months sober from drugs and alcohol And I, I just started tearing up because I remember how hard the battle has been since I've been a little kid. I tried and I failed and I failed. <laughs> and I tried and I failed and I failed and all my life I've just been failing and I wanted to do so good. I wanted to be a good husband, a good son. I wanted to be a good dad and everything and I never could be because you know, when you do drugs, it's your number one priority. And um, man, I'm eight months sober from drugs and alcohol. I don't. I don't. I don't crave it. I don't think about it. I'm working, so I know my money's gonna go in the right places. I'm just doing the right thing. I'm, the righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. For me, it's been a thousand times, and I just continue to get back up and continue to come to church, and I've had no other reason to get back up but to face God again. And if it wasn't for God, I would still be out there. So thank God. Amen. And when I and I and I and what I'm really proud of him is, you know, because it's he he. he He's been part of this church for quite some time, and it and it and 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 many would would not be here right now. But he did not give up. Um, 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 I want to, and this is what makes. Where's your wife at? Where, come over here, praise God, Amen. And this is what makes this place, God bless you, amen, because, you know, I, I know it could have been very easy to give up and just, you know, but here are the results. And again, what do we always say here? It's not the way you start, it's the way you finish. And just the people in this church also, it's like, you know what, um, when someone is going through something here, anytime somebody is trying to get back up and is willing, you know, um we the, w this church is about loving people back to life and if you don't give up god knows the heart and eventually you're going to get your breakthrough so someone needs to hear that right now you might have been serving god doing great and then you messed up again well i'm here to tell you get back up amen that's just going to become that that part's going to be part of your testimony that somebody else needs to hear just like you're hearing here today amen and let me say something here and when someone's going through something or you hear something or you think you've heard something don't you dare assume that you know the whole story and i know i can't control you know god's in control but i'm telling you you know what because this is a church this is a hospital and some people, some people, some people, some people, you know, this is a trauma center. <laughs> it's not even a high, it's a trauma center. But watch me. Don't think you know the whole story or you hear something about someone going through some. Oh, you know what? There they go again. You know what? You better take that somewhere else. No, I'm telling you right now. Don't, I, don't please don't let me hear. Don't let me catch you if I hear it there's gonna be a problem you're in the wrong church 
if you're not going to speak life and encouragement but if you're going to flap your mouth get on facebook gossip get on the phone do you know what i'm talking about you need to go somewhere else this isn't the church for you amen can i get an amen this ain't the place for you i said that's not the place for you because when you stay and we believe I'm, I'm a byproduct of it also amen i wouldn't be where i'm at and i'm better because of it i'm a better pastor i have greater compassion greater understanding of what this is about so watch this amen these are soldiers and we can you know how many tragedies could be avoided if the church would just be the church love encourage if nothing else just pray instead of talking about everybody else what about yourself amen let's get into your house let's open up the door in your house your crazy house amen praise the Lord praise God I just he shared that yesterday touched my heart God bless you and you guys praise the Lord amen and God's even right now God, look how God's using you to impact and encourage somebody else that right now is in this place that is like man I want to give up you know what and now they're hearing what you standing and I know it hasn't been easy but you know what it's gonna be worth it it's gonna be okay and there's a work to be done and God's gonna use you guys in a powerful way God bless you guys and we love you amen Amen. come on celebrate with them amen real quick and we're gonna we're gonna continue to worship Mike why don't you stand at your feet so he Mike over here we'll just keep him over here praise the Lord he, he was eating breakfast and and he just started sharing you know do you remember and you know I've been coming to this church for this long and you know and and, and you know why don't you share your testimony and you've been and, and free from um, um, you, why don't you just tell me what you told me in there because someone needs to hear that also uh, hey church well, I should say family because it's the only family that I have out here um, I remember back I remember this date because it was the day before my son's birthday July 9th of 2007 Ronnie showed up at TLC I was living in the halfway house down the street here that's the bus ministry again come on now amen and he pulled in with a white band there was no marking on it and he asked who wanted to go to church we couldn't afford the markings back then amen I said hold on let me get my Bible and I'll go and what's it 13 years later I'm still here um, I was I was sober 10 years eight years when I got here two years at TLC and then I went I was at this church coming to this church I relapsed and I started drinking again I got on my moped that everybody sees me driving. I ran through the backyard and I ran into a clothesline and broke my neck. Almost killed myself. I was in the hospital for quite a while. They, I got a metal plate in my um, titanium in my neck. Survived, survived that. God, thank you, God. And a lot of prayers when I went through that. And recently, I just went through a hip surgery. I was gone five months for that in rehabilitation. Now I got to go do the other side. I'm not looking forward to it. But in 2016, when I had that accident, I asked God to help me lose weight because I was overweight. I had diabetes, high blood pressure. Asked Him to help me with my drinking. Well, I have since two, May 1st of 2016, I haven't had a drink or. And that's. And that's that's. That's through people like Steve, you know, listening to people like Steve and helping people like Steve, you know, because we can't do it alone. Thank you. Amen. Someone celebrate in this place. Amen. It's not the way you start, it's the way you finish. Amen. Get back up in the name of Jesus. I said, get back up in the name of Jesus. Get back up in the name of Jesus. 
Get back up in the name of Jesus. Get back up in the name of Jesus. Get back up in the name of Jesus. The enemy's not going to have the final say in your life. The devil's not going to have the final say in your life. The addiction's not going to have the final say in your life. The circumstances are not going to have the final say in your life. The facts are not going to have the final say in your life. I decree and declare in this place that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is going to have the final say in your lives. And what the enemy meant for evil, God is going to turn it around and use it for the saving of many lives. Shall ye? Just lift up your hands and just worship him for a few minutes. Come on. Just worship.
Watch this. You, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Just you guys stay up here. Just I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna obey the Lord here. I believe many are gonna be set free, and there's a peace that's gonna come. A peace is gonna invade your heart, your home, your sleep is a byproduct of this i'm going to show you something here in a verse that I've, I've i've shared many times but the holy spirit's bring me back to this verse and i hear his voice saying people are going to be set free show them the illustration okay watch this you know mike was talking about we went to tlc the halfway house that was down the street over here with a van i want i want to make sure on the way out it's an amazing thing when we make ourselves available. Let's do our part. Let somebody know that we're here. Let God do the rest. This is the trauma center, but here it is though. And there's many injuries, critical, serious. But the good news is that the doctor is in. He's a great doctor might not be easy and comfortable the process but in the end if you allow the doctor to do his surgery on you everything will be all right and then you'll be able to be able to show and, and, and share with others what he did for you others that are injured others that are cut others that are broken bones and have had some accidents amen issues and problems and you're going to be able to say i know a great physician i was a lot worse than you were and look at me now you can't even tell well that's my physician his name is jesus i want us to do this this next week I'm telling you, it's a powerful thing. We hear so many testimonies of how many lives have been changed. Because when you get them in here, man, God's power is in this place. This, this place is, a, I, I've said it, it's a miracle. It's a special place. God gets all the glory. But man, the testimonies, God is, God's power is in this place. So I want to encourage everybody, out of the way out, make sure we have the little cards that says, you know, to invite somebody. Where, you know, it's those little black cards. And I want to ask each person in this room today, as you walk out, grab a card and just during this week pray over it and make sure you put it in somebody's hand amen can you do that you'll be you'll be amazed at just by doing that corporately in the next couple weeks you'll see some you'll go oh man that, that's the person i gave the card to oh that's somebody at work that i've, sh I've shared many times but you know what i did I, I ended up giving the card and this time they showed up. i can't believe they're here amen or maybe you'll go you'll end up picking somebody up and bringing them here amen Praise the Lord. Real quick, just real quick, and then we're gonna and we're gonna worship. Watch this. I want to be obedient. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food? And the body more important than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly father feeds them. Yeah, they're, li they're living pretty good. Amen. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? Look at someone and say, yes. And then go on to say, oh, you of little faith. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. And here it is, verse 33. But, look at someone and say, but here it is he's so he he's talking about don't worry he's breaking it down and then he says but here's the key here's the key to this whole thing here's the key to the whole thing look at somebody say, here's the key that unlocks the door to your peace to your victory 
to your breakthrough, to your increase, to your restoration, to your power in Jesus. Here we go. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. So he goes through all that and he says, oh God, but here it is. Here's the whole thing in conclusion. If you can get this, you got it. Here's the simplicity of the message. Here's the power to the message. Here's the victory to the message. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Verse 33, but, but, seek first his kingdom. So he goes through all this about life and worry. And, and then in verse 33 says, but, watch this, but if you just seek him first, or again, his way of doing things, not our way, his way. If we do it our way, uh, uh, we're going to have the worry. We're going to have the lack of peace. We're going to have struggle. Now, we're going to have struggle anyway, but you can have peace in your struggle. You can have victory. He's saying, listen, if you, if you put him first, and if you put him first and do it his way, so watch this. The Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But we can go on to say this. People are being destroyed also, not because of lack of knowledge. They have the knowledge, but they're destroyed for not doing the knowledge. His way of doing things then all these things shall be added unto you. In other words, he's saying, you don't have to worry. You don't have to come in the church with a list. Does God answer prayer? Yes. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man, he availeth much. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open. Okay, turn to me in the day of trial. I'll deliver in you honor. Yes, yes, yes. He wants to bless us. He, he, he responds to prayer. Yes, yes, yes. But really, you want, if you want to go, if you want to go to the next level, and we want to, you want to, and you want, th th here's the word I'm looking for, be a mature Christian, a mature Christian, you don't have to come in with the list in the, in the church. You get to a certain place in your walk with God, where God, you already know because of what he's done and brought you so far, and you know you shouldn't even be here. And you know how faithful he's been over the years, those altars, that you get to a place that I, that, 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 that I don't need to have a list anymore because he already knows what I need, when I need it. And you just put him first. You come to church to lift him up. And he promises if you do it my way, I promise to give you what you need when you need it. Because some of us are asking for some things that if God gave it to you, you know, Evangelist Lito said last night, if God, even after all these years, he goes, if God gave me a million dollars right now, I'd go to Vegas. That's why God hasn't given me a million dollars. And what he was saying is, and that's why I don't ask for a million dollars. Ah. That's good preaching right now. So, oh, a million dollars, that'd be great. I mean, you know what? Some of us couldn't handle a million dollars. It, it would destroy you. It would, it would take you out of church. So what I'm saying is, here's the simplicity of this thing. Seek first Him and His way of doing things. Be about His kingdom. Be about His cause. And then God says, all these things shall be added on to you. What you need, I know before you even... So watch this, okay. This, here's the simplicity, here's the illustration, and we're done today. 
I mean, really, if you get a hold of this, okay, amen. So I need a Jesus. Who's going to be my Jesus? Praise the Lord. Who's going to be Jesus? Come up here. Seek first this king. Come here. Come here. Come up here. Come over here. This is it. But here's Jesus. His kingdom. His way. Seek first him, right? This is this is his way of doing things. Okay. Now can I get I need about give me like let's do give me about give me ten ten people. Ten people. I need like ten ten people that ten 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 soldiers. Can I get ten soldiers here? Amen. Hey, come over here. Come on, here. Come over here. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna. Okay. Come over here. Ten soldiers. Come over here. Come on. Okay. You go over here. Ten soldiers right here. That's good. That's good. That's good. All these things shall be added unto you. Now, that's his way of doing things. This is Jesus, okay? But seek first the kingdom, right? This is this is this this group here represents the all. His way of doing things. This is the all. This is peace. This is restoration. This is breakthrough. Increase. Provision. Joy. Self-control. With some of your crazy selves, amen? Amen. Who else do I got left over here? Patience. Kindness. We're going to double up on some. Goodness. Gentleness. Power. Power. Healing. That might be. Okay. So, so watch it. That's all you get right now, amen. So, 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 watch this. This is the all. Th this is the all. Okay, I'm gonna give you another. the new job. See, some of you, right? You've already prayed for the new job, right? Now get rid of the list and start thanking the Lord for the new job. Now, watch this. If you do what I'm gonna show you right now, in God's timing, if you're doing it His way, okay. So watch this, the new job, the restoration, household salvation. Uh, I think there's something in the Bible that says, you and your family shall be sitting. Okay. Are you with me so far? Okay. My job is to do one thing, according to this word. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these. It doesn't say go seeking for the for the for the all it doesn't even tell me now don't get me wrong listen i'm not saying not to pray not to ask the lord god that, that that's the, as a child of god that communication amen according to his will if it's in his word praise the lord but there's just a point where you get in your walk in the lord where you go past that i are you uh, because sometimes what we're asking we don't even know what we're asking like sometimes some of the things that we're asking for watch this that, that, that we're asking for are actually things see God sees the future and he knows what's best for you and and sometimes we're asking sometimes we're asking too small and God says man I got so much more and you're asking for this see see but here if, we, if, if but this verse lets me know I don't even have to worry about that because if I seek him then whatever he has he's get the all will watch this so watch this so watch so Jesus you're gonna this is Jesus the word his way of doing things you're gonna start walking that way okay as, as as I follow as I follow him I want you guys to just stay you know right about right here okay and just follow at that distance behind me keep going 
This is his way of doing things, coming to church. This is his way of doing things, prayer meeting on Monday. This is his way of doing things, meditating on his word day and night. This is his way of doing things, uh, uh, tithing. Uh, uh, did you hear what I said? Tithing. Amen. This, this is his way of doing things, uh, uh, um, um, witnessing and sharing the gospel to others. This is his way of doing things, forgiving others uh, and forgiving one another's amen this is his way of doing things worshiping him and praising him and lifting up his name this is his way of doing things and as i continue to do do it his way amen as i as i as i'm seeking him as as, as i'm praying as i'm as i'm spending time with him as i'm coming to church as i'm if, i'm at where i'm supposed to be where he wants me to be amen watch this as i continue to do that my watch this my eyes I haven't looked back one time, and the all is just following me. All I got to do is, watch this, continue to follow him and keep my eyes on him. If my eyes are on him, it can't, my eyes can't be on anything else. If I'm witnessing to others and sharing the gospel, I can't be doing something else. If I'm in church, I can't be at the corner. Are you in this place, amen? Are you in this place? When I'm giving, amen, that's his way of doing things. When I'm forgiving, when I'm encouraging, when I'm bringing hope to others, his way of doing things. You don't have to look at the all. You don't have to convince the all to come. You don't have to say nothing. Yeah, as long as you keep following him and doing it his way, you know, go up on stage. All of a sudden, in God's timing, all of a sudden, watch it. See, do you notice the all just keeps on following me? And all these things, and all these things. And all these things. And all, I don't have to, I don't have to do any, I don't have to put any energy to convince the all to come get me. That's the problem. We're trying to, 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 to do things in our own strength. To, 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 to put, we put our hand where God says, get your hand out of it. Get your hand out of the process. Get your hand out of the assignment. Get your hand out of the purpose. I've got it covered. All I need from you is to keep your eyes on me and don't take your eyes off of me. And as you do that, watch this. Little by little, there's a time that comes and all of a sudden, here it comes all. Now, come on. Now, just get around me. Just get around me. As long as I got, and then get around me, get around me. And then all just comes and, and just, and just, and, and I could try to run. I could try to hide. I, I could try to get away from the all. It does, as long as I'm following him and doing it his way, all is going to come find me. Amen. I don't have to go looking for all. All will come looking for me. Blessing will come looking for me. Provision will come looking for me. Healing will come looking for me. Deliverance will come looking for me. Joy will come looking for me. Breakthrough will come looking for me. Restoration will come looking for me. Chains get broken in the name of Jesus. Self-control comes looking for me. Amen. Joy unspeakable. Peace that surpasses human understanding comes looking for me as a byproduct of could someone say amen? amen? Give everybody a hand, amen? Okay, everyone off the stage, off the stage. Because when we're connected to him doing it his way, it's not us doing it, it's him doing it through us. It's his joy, his power. His peace, his self-control, his provision. When you get that call for that, for that new job or that promotion, it wasn't that person. Well, it was somebody that called somebody and, you know, kind of made it happen. No, it, it wasn't them. It was because you kept on following him. God used some people. But make no mistake, it wasn't the people. It was God using the people. Because you put him first. That's how simple this is. Where we don't have peace, where we have struggle, where things start to break down, it all comes down 
to one thing. It comes back to this. Our relationship with him. I'm not talking about just going through the motions. I'm not talking about just, you know, coming in and just, you know, singing a couple songs. I'm talking about relationship. And when you're in relationship, the Bible says, if you love me, you're going to obey me. And out of that relationship comes obedience, his way of doing things. And as a byproduct of that, all will come looking for you in his timing. Whatever he's called you to, whatever your purpose is, whatever your assignment is, you can just rest in him. Just keep being where you're supposed to be. Keep doing the next right thing. Keep serving. Keep encouraging people. Keep working. Keep doing the next right thing. And whatever God has for you, you don't have to go make it happen. God has already made it happen. He's just waiting for you and me to get in order. He's the God of order. He's not the author of confusion. And when we come in order with the word of God and God's way of doing things, I'm telling you, you can run. You can try to hide from it. It'll run you down. It, you, can, you can try to hide. It'll find, all will find you. Amen. It'll get so ridiculous. It's like, man, that is just what that I didn't even. And then, and then so, here's a surprise. When you live this way, that's where the surprises come in. It's like, oh my goodness, I never expected that. Where did this blessing come from? I expected some things, you know, but but this is like this is this is above and beyond what I was expecting. Oh, and by the way, the God we serve exceeds our expectations. God wants to bring us to a place as a church and as a people. And I finish with this. He wants to bring the church, the vision of this church, and everyone in this place to a place where, watch this, where he, ex he wants us to live in a place where he exceeds our expectations, not, but daily. Watch it. When he delivered the Israelites out of bondage 400 years from Egypt and from Pharaoh right when they were delivered that was their cry see we can limit God if we're not careful they wanted deliverance God says I got a lot more than just deliverance so when they were delivered that was what they were expecting and believing for but God delivered them but also healed every one of them hear me carefully not one, the Bible says, was feeble among them. That means every one of them was healed. The whole church. Physically and spiritually healed. Nobody on crutches. Nobody on stretchers. The movie's not right. Amen. That we watch and they're crawling out, you know, and, and you see that scene. That's not biblical. Not one was feeble. And they walked out with all the plunder of Egypt. And you've heard me say this many times. For example, so they got delivered. That was our expectation. Finally, right? They get delivered, but he exceeds our expectations. And as they were marching out, they were all healed. So now they're walking out. They got their strength physically and spiritually, and they're walking out with brand new Nikes. <laughs> God wants to bring us to that place. You don't have to ask for the Nikes. All you have to do is seek first his kingdom, his way of doing things, and the Nikes will come. Amen? And, and, and as you continue to go, not just one pair, he'll bless you with a lot more because then he'll see your faithfulness and say, I can trust this one with, with 10 pairs of Nikes because I know they'll keep two of them and give eight away. Did you hear what I said? Amen. Because you understand when God blesses us, it's for us to be a blessing also. So rest in him. If there seems to be a breakdown, it could be there's a breakdown in the relationship with him. And then within it some of us feel like we're in relationship and i've been there before 
but we're not doing it his way. We're in relationship. As I said, if you're in ministry, I've been there before. It's like I'm doing the ministry. And it seems like I'm in relationship doing it his way. But in reality, I'm in relationship with the ministry, not the one that I'm doing it for. And we can get ourselves into trouble there also. Our focus needs to be him. And when it is, that's where your rest comes. That's where your peace comes. And then you sit back. You do your part. You do the, right, the next right thing, like I said. Continue doing the next right thing. Doing it his way. And everything else will start to find you for his glory. Lift up your hands and say, I receive it. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Great prayer when we come into church. Not my will, but your will to be done. Whatever you have for me, Lord, I surrender to you. Whatever you have for me, for my family, and for my purpose, I surrender to you. Whatever the all is that you have for me, I surrender to you. And rest in that. Because there's some things that we're asking for that God says, if I gave them to you, it'll hurt you, not help you. And there's some things that you even haven't asked for, and they're things that I want to give to you. Because they're going to help you. And I want to surprise you. And it's greater than you can imagine. It's bigger than you can think. It's greater. Not my will, but your will to be done. Not my way, but your way. Whatever you have in store for me, your will to be done. And keep doing it his way, amen? And watch what God will do. See how the peace comes in your life. The joy. The joy even when you're going through some stuff. Even when you don't understand some things. Even when it gets a little crazy sometimes. And we're going to go through those seasons. We're going to go through some valleys. But if you keep doing it his way and stay consistent and you don't give up, you can have peace. You can have victory. You can, have your, you can still have your jump in your step in your valley and still be victorious and still have a smile on your face just like when you're on the mountaintop. The reason why we don't have the joy and the jump and the shout in the valley as we do in the mountaintop is because somewhere there's a breakdown in his way of doing things. Are you all right? Lift up your hands and worship him right now. Just bless his name. Hallelujah. Come on. Amazing love that welcomes me. The kindness of mercy that bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving. God, you're so good. God.
about me right now <laughs> he just he just he just he just messed me up right now he just he just convicted me right now so so I'll just be transparent what you see is what you get you guys know that already As just right now in this in the spirit he just right now it was like God was saying are you listening to what you're telling everybody the reason why why well, just 
there's been some areas in your life talking to me now where you've been stressed and you're lacking some peace and and he goes if you if if you if you if you if you spend more time with me okay so that's, that's, I'm gonna and keep your eyes on me because the issue has been with you that's me but this is with you too some of you right now get ready your attitude attitude fill in the blank and your attitude fill in your blank is because there's a breakdown right here if you get this right busy running doing all this stuff then your attitude becomes right and your attitude determines your altitude and many of us, our attitude and the way our attitude is adjusted, it's not like, okay, I'm, I got to change my attitude. If we are following him and doing it his way and he's got our heart and we're completely surrendered to him, then we get his mind. When we have his mind and his heart, then our attitude is what he wants it to be it's always positive it's always speaking the solution it's not complaining it's not murmuring it's not gossiping it does it's it's the year it, no matter what the situation no matter what the giant is in front of you as i said last night the giant in front of you is not greater than the god within you And when you're connected to him, your attitude is right. So now I'm looking at everything from his point of view. My mind is clear. And I'm seeing it from his point of view. And his point of view is solution. His point of view is peace and 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 um, and, er, that, that, and and rest in him and and that what you start to see that you know what? If he's brought me this far, he's going to bring me the rest of the way that, 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 uh, well, I'm reminded of Matthew chapter six and not to worry because God knows what I need when I need it. And some things I don't understand, but I know in the end, God's going to have the final say. So, so even the stuff I don't understand, I'm going to have a right attitude. I'm going to have a God attitude. Many of us are stuck. God just spoke to me. And even to me right now, where God wants to take this assignment, the attitude determines the altitude. And God is saying in this place, there needs to be attitude adjustments. Some of you are just kind of looking at me, I don't know what you're talking about. No, I'm talking about you right there, amen. See, that was, that, that was it, you just manifested yourself. You just manifested, amen. He just manifested just by looking at me with that. <laughs> but he will give us the strength, his power, his heart. If we try to do it and go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a positive attitude. Now, okay, that's a start when you make a decision. Say, okay, um, this is what I'm going to work on, okay? You got to take that step and say, okay, I recognize my attitude is not good. Or it. But then the rest of the way, if you're going to go the distance, it's Him working through you, the Holy Spirit. And it's your relationship. So then all of a sudden, where, where it was tough and you 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 would respond a certain way you're not responding that way because you're surrendered to him you have his heart and it's him flowing through you so he's doing it through you so as I get angry the 
fruit of the spirit that's a byproduct of seeking him relationship is self-control you can have self-control and someone's like oh it's just a no there's a breakdown in your relationship or you don't have one yet and when you're in the word if it's the word going in it's going to be the word going out if our language if we have bad language someone said listen I've had, we've had our moments I've had my moments but you know when I've had moments is when my relationship I'm not spending time with them and the more I'm not spending time with them or in the word all of a sudden some of that language starts to come back come on now come on can we keep it real why are you looking at me like I'm acting like you know you've never been in the car driving and had something to say to somebody amen and the reason why is somewhere because when we're following him doing it his way and we're connected to him man you can be cut off a hundred times and all you're doing is praise the lord right and then all of a sudden what happened we got sign language going we got things being said amen but then there's another time where it's like you just, there's a peace and there's a joy and you're like people are cutting from people might have something to say also most irritating thing is like you know when someone's like when you when you you know you, 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 you you're at the light or something you know and they're, they're beeping the horn and you're like okay it was only like one second amen it just turned it just changed it's like so you know what i mean you know what, 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 those moments amen or better yet when they go around you and you're just driving you're going the speed limit you know what i mean praise the lord and now I, I, I'm really going the speed limit and under the speed limit with the family, amen. And then it, so so I, you get the people that come around the, from the back behind you and they look at you, they beat the horn, like kind of like man, you know. And it's like, and, and the same ones that did that, the other lane was open anyway. So it's like, what's the problem? They beep and they, you know what I mean. And then, you know, and when something rises up, it's like, wait a second, where did that come from? And why is it rising up? Because if I'm feeding on the Word of God, it's the Word of God. That's the appetite that I have, and that's what's inside of me. And if something else is coming out, that means I'm feeding on something else. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because if I'm doing it His way and following Him, then all these things, the joy, the peace, the self-control, all that comes along with and, and you can know a, a way to know is in moments like that just basic everyday moments your language oh praise god i'm just having a human moment i understand a, you hear that all the time and trust me i've had a lot of human moments since i've been saved but you know what after a while when that, that's all you hear from somebody it's like i'm just uh, it's just a human moment you know where you're going well i get it, it's a human moment but i mean but but how long are you going to keep on having a human moment when you've got the answer and you've got victory and you so you're how, how long is the human moment going to last i'm just you know i'm human you know you know my language is no your language should change you should walk into rooms and the language around the facility should change because of you because of whose you are and the presence when you walk in there and because of your walk and because of your joy and because of the fruit that's flowing through you that people know all of a sudden it's like oh hey, have you ever gotten this too where it's like you walk in it's like and someone's saying something it's like oh i'm sorry that's when you know you, 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 you're following him amen when you're walking in and no one's changing their language there's a breakdown Talk about people that know you and you in your work environment and places you know but if not then something's wrong but but when, when they do then man something's is right amen i want to just for the next few minutes i pray you are encouraged today amen i just think i just think and we're, i'm gonna open up the altars just for the next few minutes we're dismissed just for a few minutes i believe because when we we're singing this earlier i just felt in the spirit things were shifting and they were shifting because you're taking your eyes off your problems and your list and you're putting your eyes on him and things in the spirits have started to shift because you're telling him i trust you 
and your will to be done i surrender i trust you for the all whatever the all is because you know best i remember we first came over here this church you know I, 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 we talked about a ministry and we're at osborne in the house back then it was a ministry and and if we're, i was thinking we're going to get a looking for a church building or something in, in certain areas right just kind of looking around and what God had in store and the next thing I know is, as a byproduct of somebody that uh, a pastor that told me about his father that was going to be selling this place the next thing I know I find myself here and, and I'm like Diamond Street when he first said Diamond I'm like where's Diamond Street and then we came over here and I'm like oh Lord amen this place was a mess but God kept on speaking over and over, over and over, and I had to get my mind out of it. I mean, I'm in the, I'm in the weekend here visiting after like a Saturday night at Osborne, came over here on a weekend and came here. It was like, I don't know, about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. There was no parking lot there. And I mean, the activity that was happening in this, in this, in this, in this area was off the charts. You have, no, I mean, maybe some do because you're in the area. What, what, what God has done in this area is remarkable. Watch it. So when we came over, I'm like, oh my Lord, this is, I don't even know what to, what do I start? What do I do? God spoke to me and as I told you over and over and God confirmed it over and over through people that I trust that this is where I'm bringing you to. Okay, now I had to get my mind out of the way and the way, my, my way, my list or what I thought about ministry. And it was almost like, now I look back, it was like God saying, see, I have so much more. If you would have done it your way, you would have, you, you would have been limited. So I stepped over here, right? And he said, if you keep the thing, the thing, the hurting, the poor, the afflicted, the addicted, and the lost, you'll never lack. We took a step, came over here, and then all of a sudden, set free ministry. I remember right when we came in here to start to, to, to knock out stuff and clean stuff up. We need a brand new roof, take out the carpeting, you know, change this whole place up. Anyway, long story short, the, one of the, fir the first week, the whole camp i'll never forget pastor jack back then brought like about 50 guys here it was awesome came over here and we actually and, and i actually he says can you talk to the guys also and we had a little we had a we had a service here with no with not and it was there was it was um no carpet no nothing and i believe it was right here all the guys were over here so all of a sudden god started to bring people i didn't i didn't call i didn't say can you bring the guys to help Teen Challenge showed up and started helping. People started to come from, all of a sudden within one month, we had this place stripped, brand new carpeting, brand new roof, a wall all the way around. And in two and a half years, as I've said before, a $1 million project was debt free. What I'm saying is not one time I said, Lord, how are we gonna do this? And here's the list and I need a this. And, I, I I didn't even know where to begin but what I did do is obey his word this is where he sent us and he said if you keep the thing the thing and as soon as we came here the one thing we were faithful to the rest I had find all of it I had no idea the resources started coming from everywhere no they did everywhere it was one miracle after another the one thing we did do is immediately we started going in the neighborhood and sharing the gospel and loving on our community and letting people know that we were here and all these things shall be added on to you. And who would have thought years later, here we are. International church, television ministry, all of this, the bus, all, all these ministries that are taking place around the world. Exceeded my expectations. And I know there's so much more. Because in due season, I believe, even what we're believing for here is a Jamea, he's probably, God's saying, man, you're still, you're still thinking small, amen. Just, just stay out of the way, amen. Just keep your eyes on, I know it's so simple, but it's so true. Spend more time with him and put down the phone. Don't worry about where somebody's having lunch later. I wonder what they did. I wonder where they're at. I wonder what they're up to. Put down the phone. You want your peace? Put down the phone for a few minutes and spend time with him. Can someone say amen? Real quickly, just stand to your feet. Just stand to your feet and we conclude with this. If that's you right now, just for the next few minutes, this is what I want to do. And I believe 
Like I said, something's happening. There's a shift that's going on. Things are being shifted right now for the glory of God in your life. And it's just a byproduct of putting him first right now and getting everything else out of the way. Worship is a powerful thing. Amen. Watch this. As we do this and we worship and we sing this song right now, if you don't know Jesus, your miracle starts with a relationship with him. If you've been away from the things of God, a righteous man, Stephen said it best, a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. Get back up. Amen. To my prodigals, come back home. Learn from it, grow from it, and move forward. Amen. And to others in this room, as the word went forth, as far as some things that need to be adjusted, amen, relationship-wise. So what I want to do is, for the next few minutes, and please obey this right now, under this anointing, because something's going to happen here, and you might not see it or feel it right now, but you will, as I said last night, four days down the road, you're going to be at home or somewhere, and you're like, oh my God, oh my God. It might be a week later and you're going to go, oh my God, something, and you're going to remember this morning, this altar, and you're going to say, that was Sunday morning. That was Sunday morning. And you're going to see the manifestation of things in a week or two that are a byproduct of what's about to take place right now. Amen? Do you believe it? So what I want to do right now, just for the next few minutes, just for the next few minutes, and this is how we're going to switch, and I'm going to pray for salvation, then we're going to close. I want us to get as close as we can, if you're able to, okay, as an act of obedience. And I want us all to worship together this song and just lift up his name right now. I want us to get as close as we can to this altar. Amen. Come on. Just get as close as you can. Get in the get in the in the in the aisles if you want, if you need to, if you need to. Come on. Hallelujah. You're so Hallelujah. Good. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Just get as close as you can. God, you're so
on church from here you sing Sing it out. Come on, sing it again. Come on, every voice lift it up. Come on. God. My God. Watch this, watch this, watch this. If your focus is how good he is, instead of focusing on the problems, focus on how good he is. We put weight, and listen, I get spiritual warfare and all that stuff, but you know what? Let me tell you something. By the grace of God, if you're a child of God, covered and washed by the blood of Jesus you know sometimes like oh this how someone's doing it the only thing that can that, that can that, that 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 can impact my life is the door that I open up with my disobedience people can pray their prayers they can put they you know you see you hear stuff like sometimes I'm just trying to make a point they put stuff like you know I, I, I remember years ago someone's like you know witchcraft stuff and you know putting you know dead animals all this crazy stuff right if you've been born again washed by the blood of Jesus and covered by the blood of Jesus stop focusing on that dumb stuff stop stop wasting your so, so we're gonna we're gonna reduce our salvation and the cross and the resurrection to some dead animal is gonna impact my life I don't know what God you serve amen The fear comes in if we're not living right. The point I'm trying to make is stop giving your focus and your attention to the enemy, to the devil, and start putting your focus. Start focusing on him and how good he is, how much he loves you how much he cares about you what he's done for you and if he's done what he's done for you and what he did back at on uh, 2000 years ago how much more does he have for you continue to trust in him and rest in him focus on the good things the promises of god the plan of god the love of god and then go forward and continue to just focus on him and be a blessing be a servant be about the kingdom and watch how the all will come looking for you. Amen. I want to start to pray this prayer. It, the Bible says your miracle, the greatest miracle is salvation. That's the greatest miracle. That's where your miracle starts. And then start to follow him. Start to do it his way start to put yourself in places of victory if you're here you can't be somewhere else doing something you shouldn't be doing and get involved as so many of you guys are following that instruction i haven't seen it like this in this church in so long people are getting saved here people are coming to church and they are getting involved everywhere you don't have to be here for one year to get involved you're here for the first time today and you want to get involved you come see us we'll put, there's plenty to do there's a lot going on yesterday we went on outreach everyone qualifies for outreach you don't have to you don't have to have 20 pieces of release forms to go on outreach amen well maybe some of you might run out and I'm probably the one on top of the list amen I need to be checked out every time amen praise the Lord it's not that funny praise the Lord amen but you can get involved and as you're involved you're doing you're, you're, you're about his kingdom so now you're not focusing on all this other stuff. See what's happening today, and I've been there. I, I, I'm, I'm, I've been there. It happens. 
we focus watch this the bible says even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil watch it you're riding your staff they come from you even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death the valley we walk through the valley well we, we get stuck in the valley because watch this we take our eyes off him his way of doing things and what do we do we start to look at the surrounding the circumstances around us and, and, and why, why did he say even though you walk through the valley you walk through the valley of the shadow of death and we put our attention and we allow a shadow it's not even death can a shadow touch you it's there but it can't touch you it's just a shadow so is it death no it's a shadow so what he said walk through keep your eyes on him stop looking at the shadow look at someone say stop looking at the shadow you're being held back by a shadow that's got no authority over you and if and if something has authority over you then today right now we're about to get it right you're gonna shut that door the only authority the enemy has is the authority that we give him by our disobedience and our rebellion to open up that door to give him that authority but the good news is we can shut that door here today and seal it with the blood of Jesus and then move forward in Jesus name and be great in Jesus name be a champion for Jesus amen and let's move forward together let's be great together Bible says, those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God is not intimidated with your sins, but he died for every one of your sins. I don't care where you were a few hours ago before service. What counts is right now. There's time to get it right right now. It'd be too late if you weren't breathing, but you're breathing and there's time to get it right. Watching at home, your altar is right where you're at. Let's pray this prayer together. Heavenly Father, I need you. I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And I believe you sent your son Jesus to this earth for me. And those who call upon his name shall be saved. Jesus, save me. Wash me with your blood. Renew a right spirit within me. I ask you to come into my heart and be Lord and Savior of my life. From this day forth, I surrender to you. I'm all yours. Your will to be done. From this day forth, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. If you're, watch this, if you're here for the first time, there's information in the bookstore. If you want to find out more about the church, it's important to get plugged in. It's important to get plugged in. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, by hearing the word of God, amen. Get around, get around this people are going in the same direction amen so please visit the bookstore don't forget prayer on Monday night amen are you glad you came praise God come on hallelujah God bless you make sure you grab a card in the way out and make sure we invite somebody amen praise the Lord and watch what God's gonna do rest in him trust him in Jesus name amen God.
You're so good. 